reading from the Psalms. Even my close friend whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Jesus was in Bethany in the home of a man known as Simon the leper. A woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go in the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. The one who has dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Yes, it is you. The Bitter Taste of Betrayal
The Shadow of Denial A reading from the prophet Zechariah Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. I do not know the man. The Shadow of Separation A reading from the Psalms How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while, and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing amongst yourselves what I meant when I said, A little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. The pain of separation. The agony of being torn apart. 
the ache of being broken hearted. The Shadow of Anguish A reading from the Psalms Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten by them as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They didn't know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners.
The Shadow of Treachery A reading from the book of Genesis They saw Joseph from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what becomes of his dreams. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the coat of many colours that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. The kiss of Judas was a slap in the face. The Shadow of Hypocrisy A reading from the prophet Isaiah He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Now at the festival, the governor Pilate was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. 
At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas! Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Let, Let him be, be crucified. crucified! Why, what evil has he done? Let, Let him, him be, be crucified. crucified! So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water. I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. The Shadow of Humiliation A reading from the prophet Isaiah Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and yet we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sin, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. A reading from First Peter to this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, 
and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews! Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes. Then they led him out to crucify him. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you The Shadow of Death A reading from the book of Samuel Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be ruler over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hands of the Philistines, for I have seen the suffering of my people, because their outcry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God.
Oh.